When I started my first business, I tried to do pretty much everything on my own. I thought there was such merit in figuring things out without anyone's help and that being independent in that way was what successful businesses did. And I was wrong. It turns out that successful business owners actually do the opposite. They work with others in mutually beneficial ways that benefit everyone's growth. But I didn't want to seem needy, so I didn't try to collaborate for the longest time in my business. And part of me was under the common misconception that business was about competition and that people didn't really want to help each other and that people would work along the lines of, how can I one-up my competitor? How can I be more successful than the other person? I think that's a natural thought to have this idea of competition above all else, especially in the first few years of business, and especially if you've come from an environment that is really competitive, like the corporate culture. But you know what comes along with competition is comparison, feeling less than, getting down on yourself and minimizing your achievements. In fact, the two things, competition and comparison, they're kind of intertwined. And comparison is the bad part. It is bad for your business. So when I finally got the game that collaboration was the way to go and started to collaborate with others, I realized that that was the fast track to growth. And I believe that there's room for all of us to start focusing on collaboration as an opportunity for growth and acceleration rather than pitting us against each other. As women business owners, we deeply understand each other's unique challenges and we're in a great position to support each other. And I believe that collaboration isn't just a nice idea, it's actually a powerful strategy that can quickly grow your business, your reach and your audience. This week on the show, we're talking about the powerhouse strategy that is collaboration. When you join forces with like like-minded business owners, you get access to that expertise and you're able to combine your strengths and your resources. You create a partnership that benefits both parties and it gives you an opportunity to reach heights that you may never have reached alone. Today, we're going to be talking about harnessing that potential because there are so many directions you can go with your collaborations. Maybe you want a greater reach. Maybe you want referrals. Maybe you want to be highlighted to someone else's audience, or maybe you just want to connect with more like-minded driven business owners. Collaboration is is the way to get there. But to create those important and impactful partnerships, you're going to need some tools. So whether you've been collaborating with others for years or it's something that you're just dipping your toe into, you're going to be able to use the 10 questions I'm going to give you to help guide those collaborations into something great. And P.S., at the end of this episode, I'll be giving you a free gift related to successful collaborations. Be sure to listen on for that. Welcome to the Her Business Podcast, where we dive deep into the stories of women entrepreneurs making their mark. Today, I'm going to be giving you 10 questions to ask for successful collaborations, and I'm going to give you some things to focus on and also some examples that you can map across to your business. Plus, at the end, I'm going to tell you how to get an easy to follow cheat sheet that I created with all the tips I'm giving you today and some next steps so that you can put it to work in your business. So let's get started. The first question to ask for successful collaborations is who else has my customer? Because your customer is not just your customer. They're not just this entity that is connected to you. They are going down a path just as we all are. They're likely already interacted with another business a step before getting to your business. They're likely actively interacting with other businesses while they're working with you. And they'll likely go on to another interaction with another business after you. Now, I don't mean this in a competitive way. It's just that we are all part of people's journey and they need us at different parts in the journey. So we're going to use that interaction with the other brands and companies to our mutual benefit. And here's how we're going to do that. So imagine you're a wedding photographer. If you ask that question, who else has my customer? What comes to mind? If you're a wedding photographer, you might want to jot this down. If you're not a wedding photographer, I'm sure you can come up with some of these ideas. I bet that florists have your customer and celebrants and caterers and venues and cake bakers and wedding dress designers and wedding dress manufacturers and cleaning companies and rental companies and the list goes on and on. Let's try a different sort of business. Say you run a web design business that works with brand new small businesses. Who else has your customer? Who else might a brand new business owner reach out to? A copywriter, a headshot photographer, a marketing agency, a bookkeeper, 
maybe a business coach or a networking membership like her business? Once again, when you start to ask that question, who else has my customer, you can see that there are so many options. They're almost endless. So think about your customer. If they're purchasing your products and services right now, who else are they buying from? When I asked myself this question a number of years ago, these are the sorts of things that popped up. So my ideal client is a woman growing and scaling her business. And asking this question opened up the doors for us to work with banks, with insurance companies, with telecommunications companies, like the big end of town, but also with other educational organizations, membership owners, other organizations that also serve women business owners, but are not direct competitors. And they were more than willing to work together because we weren't competing. So that is question one, who else has my customer? Question two is, What complementary products or services do my customers need? So this goes hand in hand with what we were just talking about. So imagine that wedding photographer example again. What products or services does my customer need that are complementary? They need a cake. They need invitations. They need a makeup artist. They need a venue. But let's take it a step further. Let's make this more relevant to your business. What else might that customer need that relates to your imaginary Wedding photography business, maybe a videographer, maybe someone who makes incredible social reels for people at weddings. I actually heard this story um, that a photographer partnered with someone who specialized in social media content and the two of them packaged together their services to work at weddings because the photographer, you know, traditionally has the SLR camera, they're doing the really professional shots, but then you need someone who's doing the quick stuff, the stuff that can be posted later that day or in real time to let that person's followers know what's happening. So similar business, not competitive, slightly different, can work together. So complementary. So maybe a content creator. So these are complementary services to you if you were a wedding photographer. So think about your own business. What can you offer your customers where you can team up with someone else who has an additional service or a like service, but not the same service where you can make it a win-win situation? What happens is that customer gets even better service. Now they've got the wedding photographer and they've got someone posting reels on their account and you and your collaborator get the client and possibly can charge more and continue to work together and refer each other business. That is number two, complementary services. The third question I want you to think about is which businesses have similar values and goals? Now, this is a really important one to me. I like to work with organizations that have particular ethics, particular standards, and have a similar mission or vision as me. So obviously, I work with women business owners. I like to support organizations that support women business owners. But let me give you an example. There's a company called Tom's, T-O-M-S, and you may have heard of them. They are an American shoe company, and every time you purchase a pair of Tom's shoes, a pair is sent to someone in need around the world who needs shoes. So they partnered with a charity called Save the Children, and they've been working together since 2011 to improve the health and education for children in the United States and around the world. So they have similar values. The values are around making a difference in the world and changing the lives of people in need. So if you have a mission-driven business, this might be a really applicable question for you. What business can you align with and collaborate with where you have a shared vision? So a few years ago, we partnered with an organization that provides education and training to staff and management of not-for-profits. So those not-for-profits are not my ideal client. They're not going to be members of the Her Business Network, but running a not-for-profit is a lot like running a small business. And their vision to support those not-for-profits to function better as businesses, that really spoke to my heart because they need to know how to get new clients, how to reach more people, how to market their services, how to build a great team, how to attract the right donors. So what we did is we partnered with them to donate actually tens of thousands of dollars each year of our online training to this organization that we aligned with values wise. Now, how did they support us? They had us on their website. They talked to us nicely to, about these organizations. And some of those organizations did end up buying some of our paid services, but that wasn't my intention. My intention was for the good of all and to support these organizations because they had a similar vision. So that was a really great collaboration that we had for a number of years. So who might that be for you?
Now, we've got 10 essential questions for successful collaborations. And remember, I am going to give you these in a cheat sheet, but you really want to listen up because you're not going to get the examples I'm going to give you in the cheat sheet. Uh, But here they come. So the fourth question is, who are the industry leaders and influencers in my niche? This one, I really want you to listen up for because this one is about credibility and visibility. Who out there is going to bolster your business's reputation and your standing amongst your idol audience? Now, you might be thinking, oh, Susie, I'm not an influencer. I don't have a large social following. Why would someone like that want to collaborate with me? Never underestimate the power of your audience or your skills or your knowledge or what you can bring to a partnership until you ask, you do not know. And a great example of this is one of our Her Business Network members, Tasha Jennings. Now, she's got an incredible business called Conceive Baby. She helps women optimize their fertility naturally, and she does that through her one-on-one services and through her Your Fertile Pantry course. Now, she happens to have a podcast. Now, on her podcast, she has had some of the world's leading experts on all sorts of topics related to conception, experts on miscarriage, experts on preconception tests, on ovulation, everything you can think of. Now, these are truly knowledgeable thought leaders, scientists, experts. Now, why do they want to work with a smaller business in this niche? Because Tasha's business is great. It's growing. It's flourishing, but it's much smaller if you looked at it in comparison to some of these big name influencers. Why would they want to work with Tasha? They want to be on a podcast. They want to get their message out. They want to get their studies to as many people as possible. So when they're invited to be on her incredible podcast, they're honored and they're excited to do so. There's another great example right in your headphones or car speakers or wherever you're listening from. If you're a frequent listener of the Her Business Podcast, you know that we have the most incredible guests here on the show and they jump at the opportunity to collaborate with us. Maybe we don't have the biggest podcast in the world. We are in the top 5% of listened to podcasts in the world, but we offer them the ears of women like you, entrepreneurs, small business owners who have wallets. They like to invest in different products and services. So we get to hear their expertise when they come here on the show. They get to spread their message as well. I want to give you another example. And again, the question we're talking about right now is, who are the industry leaders and influencers in my niche? So one of our fabulous um, Her Business members is Fiona Keery. She has a business called Style Liberation, and she helps women 35 plus create wardrobes full of outfits they absolutely love. And she does this through her membership, which is called Super Stylers, through her course, and through her amazing 35 plus Where to Shop Facebook group. Now, she has done collaborations um, a couple of collaborations in the last 12 months with Bird's Nest. Now, Bird's Nest is a big online fashion retailer. So they have a wonderful uh, location in regional New South Wales. And what Style Liberation will do is they will take a group of women on these exclusive weekend shopping trips out to the Bird's Nest headquarters. Now, the team at Bird's Nest helps curate beautiful fashion selections and the women shop and they have dinner together and drinks together. And Fiona's benefit benefits because she's offering her clients this exclusive opportunity. And of course, the team at Bird's Nest loves it because Fiona is bringing them clients. So it's a real win, win, win. Okay. So who are the movers and shakers in your industry that you could be partnering with? And never be afraid to ask because you don't know what is in it for them that they may want until you start to build these relationships. Question number five, this is another avenue for collaboration, and that is what businesses face similar challenges or opportunities? So who out there could you team up with to help solve each other's problems? So maybe your service is exactly what another entrepreneur is struggling with or vice versa. Uh, You can collaborate to problem solve and to lend specialized advice from your experience. So let me give you an example with a couple of brands that you will know, Spotify, the music provider, and Uber the ride provider. So they partnered up so that Uber customers could actually stream their Spotify playlists during their rides. So Uber clients got a better experience and no more listening to the driver's bad music taste. And Spotify got great exposure. And this was just another opportunity for them to reach an audience they may not have. 
So what other businesses are facing a similar challenge or opportunity? And in this case, it was how do we get more people listening to Spotify? And for Uber is how do we make the experience of being in an Uber better for our customers? So question number six is, what if you want to reach a completely different market? So that might be a new demographic, so a new ideal client, or it could be actually a new market. So entering a new market can be totally daunting. And partnerships and collaborations, they can be the bridge to those new markets. So if you're looking to go international to a new market, or maybe you're looking at a different demographic, a different age, or catering to a different gender market. So who has that market right now? So say, for example, you ran an adventure company and that you took people on outdoor adventures. Now we have a beautiful member inside of her business who has a business called Women's Fitness Adventures and she takes women 50 plus on adventures all over the world. But I'm not talking about her. Say your adventure business caters to audiences in their 20s or their 30s. And you know that that age group, they don't want to pay a whole lot of money for their adventures. They're quite happy to backpack it and go on the cheap. But you have a new high ticket package that you know is going to boost your profits and really change the trajectory of your business. So you need to tailor your product to a slightly older and wealthier market. So who has that market? Could you partner with a retired singles company or an empty nesters community or even an influencer who is big in the retire early community, right? Those businesses, they already have your audience and that audience has the time and likely the extra cash for that high ticket travel adventure. So you don't have to go find those people by running Facebook ads. You can actually find them by partnering with organizations who already have that customer, And here's a thing, collaborations can be like a no money exchange, but collaborations can also be a paid exchange. And I'll give you some examples of some fabulous collaborations we've done that were actually a paid service. Like we didn't go out pitching that business. It ended up being a collaboration, but we also got paid for it. So I'll give you some uh, examples in just a moment. So I really like that one. It's like, if I want to go into a different market, how can I get bridged between where I am now and there by finding the right company to help me get there. Question seven is about what organizations or associations are your customers a part of? This is a great one. And it's an easy one because you can just ask your audience. You can ask your customers the organizations they belong to. And so maybe a lot of your customers of members are, uh, say, members of the Bookkeepers Association of Australia or the International Coaching Federation, or if you are in health and wellness, you know, what are the associations and organizations your people might belong to? Or if you're in the fitness industry, what might be some of the associations? Or if you're in the um, home decor business, what are some of the associations? Whatever it is, could you then go and partner with that organization, for example, to deliver some of a great training or to do a Facebook Live for them or to deliver a fabulous freebie lead magnet through them? Maybe they'll let you email their email list or put an ad in their newsletter. And maybe they'll do something in exchange for something else. Again, if you have really great content and it will be useful to someone, content has value. So what organizations or associations could you get in front of as a thought leader and collaborate with them to get your message out in exchange for them having access to your smarts? As I said, with collaboration, there's no rule that there has to be no money exchange. There may be. The key is that you partner for the greater good of both businesses. So the Melbourne government many years ago brought us on as a partner for their small business festival. And they had thousands and thousands of um, women that they wanted to get along to this week-long event in Victoria. And they knew that we had thousands of women on our email list. And so we partnered. They made us a partner in the program. We extended invitations to their events. We were positioned as a sponsor. They gave us free advertising. They gave us a display stand. But here's where it got really good. We loved all that. But then they also asked us to run events for them as part of the festival, which leads me to question eight, which is who has the expertise or the resources that I lack? And in that instance, we had the expertise and the resources that the government department lacked. So let me explain. They wanted to get more women um, in regional Victoria attending their programs. They knew that traveling to Melbourne was going to be a deal breaker. 
But they knew that we had expertise in running webinars. We've been running webinars since 2006. So they wanted us as a partner so that we could deliver webinars that would allow them to reach women in regional Victoria. Win, win. We get to put on an event. We get to be positioned as a sponsor of the Melbourne Small Business Festival. We get to run events. They get events delivered. They can check off their list of um the goals that they had. So who has the expertise or the resources that I lack? Because you can fill in the gaps in your own capabilities, whether that's technical skills or marketing prowess or operational efficiency. So if we look at something like the acquisition of LinkedIn by Microsoft, that was a partnership that came about because Microsoft was looking to expand their expertise into an area They wanted a business with resources and expertise in networking, totally different networking than they do, but where there were millions and millions and millions of people who could use their services. And so LinkedIn clearly fit that bill. When telecommunications provider Optus, a provider here in Australia, approached us to create business guides and webinars for them, it was because they had these small business clients that they wanted to educate on their products and services and they were just throwing money at advertising and that wasn't enough. Where partnering with us, they could get close to the coalface, right? Because we had these great relationships with these small business owners and, you know, 20 plus at the time years um, of reputation, as being a solid provider of education. So who has the expertise or the resources that you lack and vice versa? What about thinking about a product or service that enhances your product or service? What do I mean? Could you collaborate with another business that could add value or bring on another feature of your product or service? So maybe there's something you can bundle to create a different offer. You can bring your products or services together. This is really about starting to think outside the box and being innovative and making the lives of your customers easier. Um, So I want you to think about that, like what offer or products enhances mine? So one of the uh, collaborations that has just happened inside the Her Business Network is that two of our members have gotten together to co-produce a podcast. They are in different industries. One of them um, has had a retail store uh, for many, many years, an online retail store in the swimwear area. But really for women um, whose bodies have changed over time, she has transitioned that into providing information and support for women as their bodies change on how to feel confident in swimwear and accessories and that sort of thing. That is the lovely Anita McLaughlin. She has partnered with Erica Webb, who is an expert in movement and somatics and the body. And the two of them have come together to create this podcast, which is about aging and about the complexities in our bodies, our minds, our moods as we start to age. I'm going to put a link to their podcast um, in the show notes, and I'll tell you where to find those a little later on. And so... What can they hope to get out of that? Firstly, they're partnering with someone they like. They have a similar audience. And what they're doing is they've created something together that enhances both their businesses. It puts them inside of, in front of their ideal client. What also happens is they're now accountable to each other. They're going to make sure they show up, they get the guests, they produce the episodes, the episodes go up and out in time, et cetera, et cetera. And so they're enhancing each other's businesses. And I promised you 10 questions. So the 10th one is, what businesses are my customers talking about or recommending? So word of mouth can so often slip off the radar as business owners because we have a million and one tasks to work on, but pay attention to what people are saying. What are people talking about? Who are they talking about? If you have a community group or a Facebook group or a forum of your own or that you belong to, this is a really great place to keep your ear to the beat of your audience. While you might not be the most in the know person uh, about other businesses, it's likely your clients and customers are. Because we can be so siloed. We don't really know what our competitors or like business are doing. So if there's a wave of interest in a company, that could be a good opportunity for collaboration. Because, Or if you keep seeing, you know, a business coach that keeps getting recognized or a piece of technology that could be complementary to what you do that keeps getting recognized. For example, we, we recognize that there's a particular technology that a lot of our clients use and they're talking about it. They're asking questions about it inside of our Facebook group. And so it's like, okay, well, they might be a really good partner for us. And it's just about listening 
really giving yourself time to just keep your finger on the pulse with what your customers are talking about. What recommendations are they making to each other? Because it's likely that that company has access to a larger community, just like those who are already your customers. And maybe there's a way to tap into that. Now, I've given you the 10 questions, but here's what I want to say. One of the biggest stuck points around collaborations that I find, and this has been my stopper as well, is that we don't want to ask. And the thing is, it doesn't have to be hard. I would look at these 10 essential questions for successful collaborations and I would go back and I would pick one or two and just start there. Or if there's someone you know who's a really great collaborator, you see them collaborating all the time, then see if you can have a chat with them and say, hey, what are you doing? What's working really well? Inside of the Her Business Network, we have such a focus on collaboration. We have training inside of our library. Women are collaborating in the group. Women raise their hand and say, hey, I'm looking for someone to do this or that with. And so it's something that we foster inside of our community because we know, especially for small business owners, if you can collaborate over spending advertising dollars, then why wouldn't you? But sometimes it takes a little bit of that gulp, that little bit of confidence that you have some value to offer. And I want to say to you, what you do is valuable for someone. That's why you have clients. It's likely that other businesses are going to jump at the opportunity of working with you, even if you don't have a large audience yourself. And there are so many ways to find businesses and entrepreneurs with whom to collaborate, whether that's through industry events and networking, online platforms, etc. Collaboration is such an incredible tool, but it's so, so underutilized. Instead, as I said, we fly solo, we go it alone, and it makes our growth take so much longer. Now, I want to talk about going it alone because I recently did a podcast episode about the loneliness that we can experience being a women business owner and what to do about it. That's episode 263, if you want to go check that out. And in that episode, we talked about strategies to combat the isolation that so often comes with being a business owner. Now, partnerships and collaboration aren't just a way to reach other audiences and get new leads. It's also a way to grow your own network, to grow a community of Um, like-minded businesses and business owners that you can work with ongoingly. And I've got people that I collaborate now that I've known for 10, 20, 30 years. There are so many incredible women like you who don't realize um, what what it's like to collaborate. Um, That's why I love the Her Business community. Uh, It's something truly special. It's a super way of collaborating. And actually one of the things that we do, and again, whether you're part of our network or wherever you are connected to a community. One of the things that we do is we actually have an option um, in each member's directory profile to say that you're looking for collaborations. And so if I'm looking for a collaborator, I can look through our member directory and look who's looking for collaborations and say, oh, do they have my ideal client? Do they have expertise that I don't have? Are they somewhere in the sequence of working with my customer before or after I do. Like you can go through and ask those questions and find the right people and reach out to them. Um, We also do trainings on how to collaborate. And we also show you how to use keywords in your member profile so that collaborators can find you. So if you're a copywriter and someone's looking to collaborate with a copywriter, they just type in particular keywords and your profile pops right up. It's an incredible tool that's used every day inside the Her Business Network. Plus, it's a lot less intimidating collaborating with someone inside of the network than going, you know, to cold outreach or to influencers on Instagram, for example. Because there's already an affinity and a layer of trust between members inside the network, which makes collaboration so much easier to get started with. And so often women are opening doors for each other. And I just love to see that. So if you would like the opportunity to join the Her Business Network yourself and start collaborating soon and get yourself in the member directory, uh, plus take advantage of all the other member benefits, then I encourage you to join us by heading over to herbusinessnetwork.com today. There is a live chat there if you have any questions, all the details of what's included. It's a very um, uh, easy to use network um, and the return on investment is incredible. It comes with a money back guarantee and all the details and all the customer stories are outlined right there at herbusinessnetwork.com. Now, this episode is episode 264 and over at herbusiness.com forward slash 264, you're going to find a summary of what we've covered in today's episode and your gift for staying to the end of the episode is that is where you're going to find the downloadable copy of the 10 questions to consider when thinking about collaborations cheat sheet. So if you want to 
Uh, If you took notes along the way today, great. If you didn't, head on over to the show notes and grab your free copy. And once again, that's at herbusiness.com forward slash 264. So, I love doing this show for you. I have two things that I want to say before I go. The first is if you enjoyed this episode, would you head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a rating or a review or send me a note at podcast at herbusiness.com. I would love to know what you enjoyed, what you're taking away. The second thing is I want to give a shout out to Greg Jenkins of Monkey Pod Marketing. Now, Monkey Pod Marketing is an organization dedicated to helping users of the Keep CRM software. Um, And what Greg does is he focuses on educational content to help you level up and use marketing automation more effectively, specifically with the Keep software. He has been a lifeline for us for almost 10 years, and he uh, was listening to an episode of this show because it was with the one of the co-founders of the Keep software. So episode 259 called Conquer the Chaos is with Clayt Mask, who, you know, heads up this incredible organization. And Clayt and I talked about mastering business systems and mindset. And here is what Greg said. And I just appreciate his comment so much. He said, two of my business heroes talking shop. I honestly can't begin to quantify the impact both Susie and Clayt have had on my life. Well, cheers to you, my friend. Thank you so much for the shout out. And if you are a Keep user and you are looking for, this is really the ultimate community for Keep users who want to make sure that they're um, getting the latest updates that you you can troubleshoot without having to go through the you know FAQs, etc., or the help desk. Greg is your man. So you'll find him over at Monkey Pod Marketing. And once again, I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening. I look forward to seeing you back here on the Her Business Podcast real soon. Join me next time. Bye for now. 